Hmm. Okay. Hello, my good children. I suppose we are live. Hello to everyone. I can see a lot of people joining. Hey, I gotta say hey here in the chat. Um, I'm a bit late today because um, I got late today, no. <laughs> um, I still had some stuff to do, so two hours later, but doesn't matter. We are gonna do some infinity today. Um, first things first, if you got a Twitter account, make sure to take a look at um, STEM merch. A second I are going to open up, where do I even have to look? Um, I, I, I think I gotta look here. Um, Sex Star, the good old Sex Star 69, um, are going to officially open up our shop on the 18th of September. And yeah, we are pretty excited. And you can go ahead and subscribe to STEM Merch here on uh, Twitter. And on the 18th, I'm going to announce way more stuff. Hello to everyone. Hello to all my dear members. If you are a member, um, you can post emoji down there like Daddy Euler or me. Um, also become a member to support the channel. And today we are going to take a look at Brilliant yet again. And we are going to see how the new Infinity course actually looks. Let's take a look at Brilliant. Um, this video is obviously sponsored by Brilliant and you can try out Brilliant for free by using the link at the top of the description. You can support the channel this way big time. Um, I'm going to try to take a look at the chat from time to time. It's just kind of hard while thinking and whatsoever. But I got to try my best. And now we are going to dive right in. Um, how can I minimize this chat right here? Um, I don't know how to get rid of the chat window. Um, yeah, I'm dead in Discord because uh, I told you from the beginning that my Discord server, at least the, the cancerous one, is just there for my amusement over the course of uh, me waiting to work at the school, so yeah, um, it's kind of dead right now. Hello, Epicy Ferma and all the rest. We got to take a look at the courses and I got to look for the brand new Infinity course because I was waiting for this Infinity course for quite a while and yeah, I can't wait to try it out. They announced it like ages ago already and I think this should be the new Infinity course. Um, let me see. Mm. I think that's the new Infinity course. We're going to see how it looks and what it tastes like. Okay, we gotta start a course. And mathematics Infinity isn't a vague idea. Approximation... Okay, thank you guys for watching. Great live stream. We heard the uh, uh, word approximation. Gotta stop this now. Thank you guys for watching and I'm until the next video. I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao. No, um, in mathematics, infinity isn't a vague idea, approximation, or metaphor. Infinity is just as real as 1, 99, and 2 pi, isn't it? But is 2 pi seriously real? We don't know yet. Although it behaves very differently from points picked off the real number line, in this course you'll learn what infinity is, how it's used in mathematics, and why, <laughs> why it's indispensable everywhere, from the fundamentals of Euclidean geometry and algebra to advanced theory in calculus, discrete mathematics and non-Euclidean geometry. That sounds pretty exciting. Hello, Mohamed Arya Seputra. Am I late? No, you're not late. We just now started. What's infinite? In Sarquisides, we start by confronting these examples of the Onichan infinity inherent. <laughs> <laughs> in algebra and Euclidean geometry. Even just figuring out what is infinite and what is finite, <laughs> finite, finite is not always straightforward. Which of these is infinite? 
the number of fish in the sea. Nah, it's not. It's definitely finite. The number of positive integers. Yeah, it's indeed um, infinite. The number of grains of sand on all of the beaches on earth. Ah, nah, that, that's definitely finite because it's in the real world. The number of possible combinations that a standard circular combination log can have, though. I suppose it's just the number of positive integers. And that's correct. Give me my freaking math PhD, I tell ya, I tell ya. <laughs> the major distinction between finite and infinite is a bit more slippery though than just saying there are infinitely many whole numbers because you could count them forever, am I right? Please don't try this proof technique at home. We don't have forever to spend counting. Yeah, you're pretty right on that. As my boy... Mohamed Ababu said numbers have an end to this because time has an end. It had a start and an end and negative times are negative numbers. If you believe that, you're going to discover unravel things y y you never thought of before. True mathematical meaning. You count the number of fishes, then the number of fishes are f infinite QED. Count all the fish. <laughs> If you are asked to prove that there's an infinitely that there are infinitely many whole numbers, not even an entire life spent counting counts as a proof. However, <laughs> however, there's a logical argument that takes only a few minutes to say. If numbers weren't ever end an end though, then why is Obama president? Oh my <laughs> Sorry, well, we have our references. Oh, I'm, I'm so brain dead today. I'm, I'm, I'm so mentally damaged today. No, um, yeah, n numbers have an end, though. It's, it's not true what they say here. Numbers have an end. You can watch my last year's Halloween special, um, the Mohammed Ababu Chronicles, for proof. Trust me, it's true. If there were. <laughs> this sounds like a Mohammed Ababu. I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. <sighs> If there were finitely many whole numbers, there would be a largest whole number. <laughs> ah, I can put in the chat what the largest what what the largest whole number is. It's it's this one right here. Okay. Um. God damn it! It's this one. Okay. Ah. There is no largest whole number because for any positive whole number x. Plank, <laughs> sounds like Cuts Against Humanity, is a whole number and it is larger than x. Therefore, there must be infinitely many whole numbers. Which of these options can fill the blank in the proof above? x plus 1. I mean, it's it's just a successor function. Suck. I mean... I mean, x squared plus 1 is also a whole number, but 2x also... Um, all of the above should count. Yeah, um, I was just thinking about the successor function suck. Um, I was actually using the suck function in my bachelor's thesis. That was kind of um, epic. I uh, I should say so myself. Um, I'm doing epic meme things on um, academically um, Im Im important occasions. So yeah. Um, the con like I said, brain damage today. <laughs> Papa... I found a neat new formula for, I want to hear it, for a new diamond complex fraction of my own. After I naturally cite reference your channel in the video, can I post it? Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't care. You can post it. Hello to everyone who just joined. Um, just as a tiny little information, brilliant video. The website here is called Brilliant. You can try it out for free using the link at the top of the description. Also, if you become a member, you can um, support the channel fi financially if you wish. There's also... This new thing called Stemmert, this is the shop that Sexstar, Sexstar69 and I are going to open up on the 18th. You can subscribe to the Twitter page right here and stay updated about everything. I can also post it here in the chat, such that you can um, follow the Twitter handle. Other than that, we are doing Infinity here. We already learned that Infinity doesn't exist because numbers have an end and now we are going to continue from this point onwards. The continuity of lines in geometry and calculus motivates another flavor. What a great flavor. It tastes pretty good. Of infinity. On a line or line segment, 
Any two points that have any non-zero distance between them have infinitely many points between them. This concept is pretty hard to understand, but it's called real nimbus. Kinda hard to understand for students at first, but yeah. Why don't you inform us on the community tab when you are going to go live? I posted a story, like, four days ago already. Always watch my stories. Um, the stories are pretty good, to be honest. For example, there is always a point exactly halfway between any two points on the line segment. And, as we'll discuss later in this course, this also corresponds to the fact that there is always, always, a decimal value that's exactly halfway between any pair of different decimal values. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are actually right, they are actually right. Um, I think, yeah, never mind, never mind, I was thinking about the Intervallschachtelungsprinzip, um, I don't know what it's called in English. If the two points X and Z on the line above are a distance of 0 0.101 apart, and if Y is exactly halfway between X and Z, what is the distance from X to Y? It's exactly half as much, so it should be from, from X to Y, right? Yeah, right, I... I mean, it's it's half the distance. Um, bring the taskbar down, please. Why have you kept it on the right? Cringe. Bruh. Do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why that is? Because of my rocket dog right here. Don't look at my desktop. Since starting with stem merge and everything, uh, everything became quite a bit messy. But I'm getting my life sorted out in the last two weeks. So, yeah. <laughs> Gotta have a nice clean desktop pretty soon yet again. That's pretty cringe, bruh. Okay, that was correct. I think that's clear to everyone. Geometry has a lot of inherent infinities that are built into the nature of common geometric objects. Even empty geometric space is an infinitude of sorts. Again, this means that figuring out what is infinite and what is finite it is is not always straightforward. <laughs> not like this line segment, am I right? This boy, a pretty straight. That's a straight boy. Which of these is a finite quantity. I mean, on a line segment, we, uh, we... The area of a circle with radius 1, it's a finite quantity, even though the area is being defined by pa. The length of a line on the coordinate plane, the length is pretty much finite, the number of different Cartesian co Okay, uh, let me see for the line segment. By definition, a line has infinite length. Oh! Yes, obviously. I was thinking about vectors, they have a certain magnitude, but not the lines... Ah, I was thinking about line segments and vectors. Yeah, um, okay, okay. I done goofed, but it makes perfect sense. Okay. Is this argument about a figure below true or false? The perimeter of this regular polygon increases every time the number of sides n increases. Therefore, eventually the length of the polygon's perimeter will be larger than the circumference of the gray circle surrounding it. Um, that's a pretty cool animation. I like when it goes backwards. That looks really good. That looks really good. That, that's a really nice um, animation. Um, Okay, um, let me post a quick emoji down there in the comments, such that, such that, you know that I'm still alive. Let, let's go with a bra. You can also post custom emoji down there if you become a member of the channel. Okay, therefore, eventually the length of the polygon's perimeter will be larger than the circumference of the... No. I mean... It's it's bounded. It's 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 definitely bounded by the um by the circumference of the crazy circle, obviously. See, see, speaking Spanish, fly to the moon, fly, fly, fly to the moon. See, see, sir, fly moon. Oh, it's a cost snowflake. Very nice. I was thinking, um, how am I supposed to say if it's true or false if there's not even a statement? But there's something down here. There's something written. It's a cost snowflake. If we suppose the initial triangle has an area of one square unit, is the following claim true or false? No matter how many times the 
steps described above be carried out, the total area of the snowflake will never exceed two square units. Um, as for the Koch snowflake, I think the it, the total area is always bounded. The, the bound the, the area of the Koch snowflake is bounded, but the circumference is infinite. It's, it's a classic fractal. So yeah, makes sense. Um, how many viewers are we exactly? I'm I'm kind of interested in that to be honest. Mm. Oh, 224 viewers. That's a lot of viewers. Hello, my dear children. Ah, um, w w we are doing print right now, and me wife just <laughs> just now arrived at at home, but you can see her. She she, she she's pretty shy. Okay. Um, I like that. I I really like that they are implementing fractals in here. Fractals are always good. Um, yeah, let us move on. By the way, you can become a member of the channel to support the channel financially, alright? So, yeah, no, the door has been closed. I hope the connection um, doesn't get lost. For this quiz, we are going to start with what seems like an exceedingly simple idea, how to count things. However, this will soon ramp up. N never mind. <laughs> To being able to work with infinity as a mathematical construct, not just an abstract idea. You'll be able to prove counterintuitive ideas and really get at the essence of what infinity is. Hello, um, Shaikh Aves Metab. I have noticed a huge increase in Indian people joining my channel as subscribers in the last time. So hello, Indian fellas out there. Um, beautiful people. Beautiful people. Um, yeah. Unsubscribe to T-Series just because, all right? <laughs> That's cringe, bro, if <laughs> you subscribe to T-Series. Suppose you are setting a large table for 100 people. Each person needs a plate and a napkin. You know you have exactly 100 plates and a large number of napkins, but you're not sure how many. You set every one of the 100 plates out and put exactly one napkin on each of them. You then count only the leftover napkins and find that there are 32 of them. How many napkins did you start with? Yeah. Self-explanatory. Okay. Um, we we counted. It's a subtle distinction, but comparison with another quantity is different from you just counting. Imagine using a tally to make sure that all your dishes make it through the move. You create one mark per dish, then you're packing and strike through one mark per dish when you unpack. Even if you never take the time to count the total number of marks, you can figure out how many dishes you've lost or gained while moving. A quick historical interlude. The Labembo bone, dated to around something BC, is a bone. Thank you. By definition, it's a bone. Thank you, brilliant. <laughs> Hope you're not burning up. Hello from Burning California. No, I'm not burning up, but I'm flammable. If the sizes of cheers, cheers, that was a great pun. If the sizes of the sets of things are the same, we say they have the same cardinality. There's a bijection between them. Maybe. Is there always a bijection between them if the cardinality is the same? No, I don't think so. Um is there always a bijection between two sets if the cardinality is... Yeah, I think bijection implies that the... Bijection implies that the cardinality is the same, but does cardinality the same imply that it's a bijection? I do think so, but I'm... There is a bijection between two sets if the cardinality is equal. Yeah, if, but is it if with, with double F? Um, I'm I'm tr interested in that. Um, I think it was the case. Depends on your definition of cardinality. It's literal definition. Mm. Okay, yeah. Um, I thought so. I thought so. Um, I got some linear algebra flashbacks right now. <clears throat> okay. Um, two sets or uh, s same cardinality if each object in one set can be matched to one object. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Never mind. The other set without leaving any left. <laughs> I love to leave leftovers in my neighbor's apartment. Um, in other words, 
<laughs> you can construct one-to-one -one correspondence between the two sets, then they have the same cardinality. They have the same cardinality because we have four stones, right? Yeah, I mean, they wanted to confuse you because of the 12 and the negative 8 here. But, um, yeah, it's it's about the stones, not the numbers. This is something my grandpa always told me when I was thinking about life and shit. My, my granddad always told me it's not about the numbers, it's about the stones you gather along the way. I thought it was pretty deep. Um, hello from Ecuador. Hello, Stephanie Consta. Are you a krill? I think we got a krill in the chat. If you are a krill, please post F in the chat down there. Um, yeah. Okay. We can also do cardinality comparison with infinitely large sets if there's a bijection between the set and, um, at least for countable un uh, infinite sets to the natural numbers. Next to that row, we have another row of bolsides mark 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Are the cardinalities of these two rows of balls the same? Yes, they are the same. We can define ourselves an operation that takes um, our n to n plus 1. So the successor function and this thing... Um, I mean, not, not strictly the successor function, but you know what I'm getting at. You can define n to n plus 1 and, and thus it should work out. Um, yeah, and thus we can map each object from above to the one down there and so on. Hello, Bruno, Marino, Machiel, Maciel, whatsoever. Um, you're probably a Spanish or something. So, uh, sounds kind of Spanish, I suppose. Um, let's continue. By the way, if you want to work with me, basically, together with me, uh, you can try it pre and using the link at the top of the description. You can try it out for free. Um, suppose we have one, two, three, two infinity row of balls again and we have row one two three that stops at a million no i mean this right here is finite and this up here is infinite so yeah that definitely doesn't work out yay papa zaksham hasan ha hasan nandani hasan nandani i'm terribly sorry about the names you all got so exotic names out there um my name is Probably also exotic for the English speakers out there, like Jens or whatsoever, Jens Fila, <laughs> or whatever you call me out there. Papa, can you make a video of finding Fourier series of the natural law? Ah, oh, that's a great question. I plan on doing this, but but <laughs> this is absolute monster slaying, seriously. This one is an absolute beast. I have it somewhere in my notes, but the video would take ages. It's, it's, it's pretty hardcore, to be honest. Um, the integrals popping up are pretty hardcore. Read my name, Papa, haha. <laughs> Pedro Pablo Garcia Herrera. Was this okay? What was this okay? Um I think due to breaking bad I'm I'm kinda okay in, in pronouncing like Mexican names or Spanish names. I don't know. Herrera. <laughs> okay, let us continue. Compare one, two, three, four up until Ababu with the squares of all po Yes, for sure they are the same. We can uh find the the mapping um so from x to x squared, and this works out um, exactly. Hello from Mars, fellow Earthling. Okay, let's try one more infinite match. Yes, we got those boys right here being countable infinite. And we need to find a method of matching. If we pick a value of x from the first row, yeah, let us see. So we are going to get one half... Then we are going to get one fourth. So this is one over two to the x power. And uh, this works out. Nice. That's a lot of fun, actually. I like uh, playing around with like basic infinity stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, you're on Kettler, Kepler 228. Huh? Can you do a stream where I recount all of the digits of pi? Lol. Uh, nah, nah. But I hope that um, my boy, um, let me see. Jonas. <laughs> Jonas <laughs> is going to do um, a world record attempt next year yet again. That would be cool. Um, I would love to stream this on my channel yet again. It was a lot of fun. Papa, please blow a kiss. Just for you. Um, wait, wait. Just for you. 
Runster Homer. How the fuck do you pronounce Quim Comet? Oh, Quantum Mechanical Comet Dude Chartmaster. I was thinking, what the hell is this name? He sounds like a German speaking English until he speaks Spanish, then he sounds like an American speaking Spanish. Do I sound like Dora the Explorer? I mean, oh, take a look over there. There is uh, a C C C Borudes Bo Borudes. Oh, can you see Borudes C C? No, no. <laughs> okay. Ah, that looks good. In this last introductory quiz, we'll investigate some visual tools for exploring the infinitely, infinitely small and by using hyperbolic space instead of Euclidean, the infinitely large as well. Even though there are only ever finitely many pixels at our disposal on the screen, these visualizations will be used to symbolically represent and build intuition for infinite sequences, sums and geometric spaces. By the way, second I are go sex star 69 <laughs> and I are going to open up our shop STEM merch pretty soon so you can stay updated by taking a look at our um at our Twitter page that we're having here. So um feel free to follow the Twitter handle and yeah um, just as a little side note. Okay, visualizing infinity. Mm, suppose this runner C Great name, Sinos Paradox. Wants to start at a point marked 1 above and across the vertical line at 0. However, because of the strange way that Sino runs, each step he takes only brings him half of the remaining distance to 0. Let us see. Great interactive content. This is what I like about Brilliant. I don't like sketches and stuff like this, but Brilliant really does a good job um, visualizing things. Um, so, yeah, um, it's a lot of fun playing around with the stuff here on Brilliant. Like I said, you can try it out for free using the link at the top of the description. In order to reach zero, what would the value of Steph have to reach? This, yeah, Sinos Paradox. We can reach it in a finite amount of steps. Now let's visualize the series. Okay. Yeah, obviously converges to one in the limit. I mean, that's a nice visualization. Yeah, of course. Mm. I think everyone saw this already. Here's another way to think about creating the figure below. To start, a one unit square is cut in half. Half? <laughs> Should I say half? <laughs> <laughs> half <laughs> to start a one unit square is cut in half <laughs> in half <laughs> into two rectangles <laughs> why am I like this today I don't know what's going on I <laughs> I'm so sorry uh, this was a long day this was a really long day for you <laughs> for me I came here to learn about black holes and see a hot guy and I'm only getting one of those right now you only get black holes and the flumble mask up <laughs> okay let, <laughs> let's try to read this again <laughs> to start a one unit square is cut <laughs> Snake, could you do this, please? Hello, I'm your co-host, <laughs> I'm your co-host, Snake. To start a one unit square is, <laughs> is cut in half. <laughs> Into two rectangles. I just gotta say, oh no, what fraction of the original square area is left entirely uncovered in this process? Nothing, nothing. God damn it. I <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, I don't even know what's funny about this. I'm terribly sorry. I I I hope that you had a good laugh. I'm I'm terribly sorry. There's a slightly nicer version of this proof with yeah yeah. Um, I was thinking about the triangles. I I wanted to um say that that I have never seen this um visual representation before. No, I am not high. I'm <laughs> I'm just um herf. <laughs> <laughs> dead today and for your information i've never been high in my life before i do not take drugs i i never did and i never will i i do not intend to do so so yeah um if you see me spastic 
<laughs> spastic here at the blackboard. Um, I'm just high on life because I'm a pretty spastic person. Papa, do you know Zen Zen? Yes, I I know this guy. He did um, pretty great videos. Okay. B what the fuck is be not be not be be no ne never mind. He has spammed the chat. I'm I gotta post um the oily macaroni down here and <laughs> and, and 25. I post 25 in the uh, the chat. Papa Flemmy doesn't need drugs. I thought you do math. No, actually um I do hakuruma chaka this for your fan service. Eating some hakuruma chaka. Did I lose any viewers by being um? The way I am. <laughs> we still got... Whoa! We didn't lose any viewers. That, that's good. That, that's good. I should definitely do um, more live streams. I love doing live streams. By the way, you can become a member by clicking the join button down below. You can support the channel this way. Just as a side note. In normal case, I do not advertise the memberships here on this channel in any way. But occasionally on live streams I do. Because it's kind of cool if you become a member. You are going to appear in the chat and and then it's going to say like I don't know uh, Ranjan but became a member and and that's pretty cool I think um, and there are going to be a new member perks soon like discount codes for STEM merch MIT Spring Shop and stuff like this I'm going to polish them up pretty soon um, Papa do you know Austria no I don't know this um, Papa Flemmy ich werde Physik in Deutschland Stop the English accent. Papa Flemmy, ich werde Physik in Deutschland studieren. Hättest du eventuell eine Empfehlung, egal auf Englisch oder Deutsch? Um, what do you mean exactly, Matteo? Um, what do you mean by recommendation? Like the university where you should go or like the branch of physics you should um, go into? If so, I would um, recommend to you nonlinear dynamics and chaos theory because it's the future. It's applied physics, um, and it's pretty damn cool, and has a lot of mathematics in it. Um, yeah, other than that, hello, David Mora from California. Hello, Tissio Kakio. Kayo. <laughs> the best branch of physics, mathematics. Yeah, in, indeed. Okay, let me see. One strange observation about Sino's journey is that his left and right feet aren't doing the same amount of leg work. Never thought about this, actually. Like, um... One part is doing the green area, like the green length, basically added together, and the other one... Ah, uh, this is cool. Never thought about this, honestly. The total pink area in this figure corresponds to the total distance of steps that Zeno takes with his right foot. Total green area corresponds left foot. What fraction of the total distance from 1 to 0 is covered by steps Zeno takes with his right foot? Um... It looks like, I mean, we got one half here and then a half of the half. I would go for, oh no, with with his right foot, am I right? Mm. I would say it takes up a third, but I'm not certain. I would need to calculate the geometric series. I'm going to go for a third. Yes, it just looked like a third, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, okay. So we got some German answers down here. This is pretty good. Uh, I got a nice community here on YouTube. And I'm so glad that I got this community. Um, even though I'm not posting videos sometimes and shit like this. You are always behind me even though there's some dramas. Um, I don't like the word drama because drama would imply that it's comedy too. So so drama consists of tragedy and, and comedy. So I rather would um, say that... Uh, there's tragedy surrounding the channel from time to time, but you're always behind me and I just love you guys. That's what I want to say to you. You're the best. You're the best. I love my community. It's just so peaceful down there and you're always doing really constructive stuff down there in the comments. And on the last PyMath video, um, I actually felt like I learned something, especially regarding the range that you can put in a third parameter and stuff like this. So just um, thanks to all of you for commenting down there and all of this. Um, I try to still read all the comments even though I don't heart them anymore uh, too much. I try to get back to that at some point. Um, yeah, um, just thanks to all of you. You are great. <laughs> uh, other than that, yeah, I was just estimating. Yeah, I'm not having too many headaches in the last time, so uh, kind of okay to be honest. Here's the one with the triangle. That's a nice geometric proof and it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Looks like a um, flower tessellation in some way when you do or origami tessellations. Um, yeah. 
Hallo Papa, hast du Tipps fürs Mathestudium? Fange bald an. Ähm, schau mal mein Der Fuchs Video an oder allgemein mein Interview mit Der Fuchs, entweder auf seinem Kanal oder auf meinem Kanal. Um, yeah. I love you, Jens. You show mathematicians can be lively and fun. Yeah, uh, most mathematicians I um, know about are already dead, so they are not really lively like Euler and, and Riemann. But the ones that are lively are actually uh, kind of fun most of the time if they aren't like um, too academically stiff, I would say. Um, yeah, Papa, can you do a series on the calculus of variations? I plan on doing so. Um, yeah, at, at some point. I really like it. I would also love to cover function analysis and stuff like this. And I would like to get to group theory too. There's just so much stuff I won't do and I have a lot of years to go still for YouTube. So yeah, a lot of content to come. So there's nothing stopping us from doing the same sort of thing with other shapes. Start with an equilateral, I hate that word, I'm not good at pronouncing it, equilateral triangle that has an area of one and cut it into four congruent triangles. Oh yeah, I was thinking where's the fourth one, it's, it's right in the middle, okay. Coloring three of them. If we repeat this process indefinitely, we would generate the spiral of triangles shown below. <clears throat> All of them equilateral. Focusing on just one color, say green, what does the above visualization show? I mean, obviously, obviously it's going to take up one third of the whole thing. But before it was one quarter and we are repeating this process. And I think that's correct. <clears throat> Okay, um, I never had uh, category theory or like C star algebras and stuff like this at university, so I would need to read into those topics. But I have heard that category theory is 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 a real beast and and really good to know about. So yeah, um, I would love to read into that at some point. Um, okay, do you ever heard about geometric inversion, Papa? Like transforming circles into straight lines? Yes, I have heard about this. Um, Those are special transformations and they are pretty cool. Papa, can you do a series on G-Advanced? Um, G-Advanced is definitely going to appear on my hard exam series together with Sex Star. So, yeah, um, I'm going to cover it there and probably also going to post some solutions on it. But I'm not certain if I'm going to do it for G-Advanced 2019 or 2020, but probably for 2019. That's already planned. Um... Okay, uh, here we have a bit of stuff. Why is this what hyperbolic space looks like? Because we define it like this, I suppose. Okay, um, if you tessellate with regular hexagons rather than triangles, what would the corresponding hyperbolic tessellation look like? <clears throat> I mean, we are going to get hyperbolas in the process, so I would say B. Yes. Um, I, here we we got some hyperbolas going here, so this is like the hyperbolic part with the abscissas and shit. And yeah, um, that was just my um, interpretation of the problem here. Okay, um, great, great. Any other questions down there? Um, okay, let me see. How many viewers? I'm 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 always interested in the amount of viewers that are still here. 215. That looks pretty good. Pretty stable, way better than last live stream. Okay, oh, what, what's this? <clears throat> oh, this is like a cube fractal. This is cool. Cantor's theorem, that, that is cool. Okay, I think we are done with the very first part of um, this infinity course. And now we can change the chapter. That was a lot of fun till now. Um, that looks really promising, like the rest of the, of the chapter. Um... Good luck, uh, Baska Bardwaj, or whatsoever. Um, <laughs> uh, good luck with the G-Advanced exam. What do you think about chemis uh, chemists? Physics has too much math for me, so I did chemistry degree. But do you think that theoretical chemistry is so much better than, than doing physics? I don't think so. I have heard that uh, theoretical chemistry is, is absolute hell. Um... But this came from people who are not good at mathematics, so I can't really judge that. Why do most math teaching at universities sucks? 
I think the YouTube streamers like Free Brew and Brown, <laughs> Brown, <laughs> Flamble Maths, etc., are the ones who make people really understand math. Now, do you know what the difference is? D there's one big difference. I, for myself, um, think that people cannot learn real mathematics or like everything on YouTube. I do not think that YouTube is a good way of um, learning deep into mathematics. You can learn a few extra things. You can um, you can brush up on a few topics like integration. This is true. But the thing is, you can only really learn mathematics if you do it by yourself, reading through books, or attend lectures, or, or sit at school. Thing is, um, in university and at schools, it's, it's pretty forced to go there. You are forced to go there, and you are doing things that are not particularly to your liking in in some way but here on youtube you are just sitting down and and listening to someone and there's a big difference in in, in motivation there i think um that the motivation is the big difference here and and regarding that uh, t teaching sucks at university i mean most of the people there are professors and they are not pedagogical people they are just professors in their field and they never did a formal um pedagogical um education for themselves so that's the big difference there papa flemmy do you like to be called papa flemmy yeah i i love it it's so good it's just weird when uh, female individuals call me papa even on the street this is weird if they approach me and they call me papa it's kind of weird but it happens it's kind of it's kind of sexy <laughs> no it's kind of weird <laughs> i mean i don't mind if if my uh boys here call me um papa but um, being called puppy or papa on the street by a female individual is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm just glad that my students at school don't call me papa because this could um, this could be kind of controversial, to be honest. I mean, coming in there with the parents and, and suddenly students call me papa, papa, teach me something. This sounds kind of um, hentai this. Okay, Snack, do we want to continue? Yes, Papa, we are half <laughs> way done. Okay, Snack, let us continue. Okay. Consider these capybaras and toucans. Since there are only a few, we can easily see that there are more capybaras than toucans. What would it mean if we did the same, but two toucans had to sit on one... In another way to look at this is that if each toucan sits on a different capybara, there will be one capybara without a toucan. What would it mean if we did the same but two toucans had to sit on one capybara? We always have more toucans than capybaras, right? I mean, yeah, the, yeah, sure. Why did I even think about that? Wissen deine Schüler von deinem YouTube-Kanal? Do my students know about my YouTube channel? Yeah, they do, because some teacher um, spilled it out. They they just told someone that I have a YouTube channel, or maybe they Googled me or what whatever. But the good thing is, you have to know one thing about German students. First thing, they are really bad at mathematics. Second, they are even worse at speaking English, like me. I can speak English for shit. So they are really bad at English and mathematics. And if they are bad at mathematics, they are going to hate higher mathematics. And if it's in English, then they are going to hate it even more. Meaning, they are just going to see that I have a YouTube channel, I have a bunch of subscribers, but then they are just going to be turned down by the idea that someone's doing weird mathematics in English. And yeah, that basically settles the deal. So, yeah, they know about the YouTube channel, but um, no one really cares about the main one, at least, because they do not understand shit. Yeah. Hello, virus x 728 Minecraft. What is this username? Please change it. Please change it to uh, Minecraft69420 XD lol funny sex number. What level of math are you teaching? Um, high school mathematics basically the level of mathematics I'm teaching on Flamble Maths 2 by the way you can subscribe to Flamble Maths 2 okay um, let us continue if we can match up every element of one set to exactly one element of the other set with no repeat and nothing left over we say that the two sets have the same cardinality we also say that the sets have a one to one correspondent it's a matter of freaking by checks yes I do play video games but not too much in the last time. I have way too much stuff to do. Hey, Shika. 
Srivastava. Hello. Um, <laughs> Minecraft <laughs> 69 for 20 XT funny sex. <laughs> That's a really good username. Uh, does it lag for only me? Mm. I have a waifu, a, a real waifu, not the ones here in my um, in my shelf. I have a real waifu sitting somewhere there in the living room right now. <laughs> the set of capybaras and the set of toucans shown above have the same cardinality free because we can match blah blah blah. Which of the collections below have the same cardinality? They are four, they are four, so A and B. A and B only, I suppose. That looks good. Flamble Maths. Even though I already know everything on the second channel, I'm a big fan of the explanations on there. Would definitely recommend it to students I know. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm trying my best to, to kind of keep it on a good level, um, knowledge-wise, like, like from the abstract level. But I also like to um, keep it safe and sound at a level where you can really apply it to school. I'm trying my best to explain it as best as possible. And yeah, um, thanks that you enjoy my channel. You can find a link to the ch second channel down there in the description as well as the link to pre and to try it out for yourself. So what did Matron say? Um, will you have Papa Flemmy written on your grave? Um, no. I don't think so. But do you know what I'm going to do? If I ever were to reach the um, 1 million subscribers, um, it also happens that you can put some name on there. They really don't check what the name on the on the uh, play button is going to be, and I'm probably going to put on there Pussy Eater 69 on my man uh, on my 1 million play button. If that's ever going to happen, I don't think so. Um, since my channel is more focused on kind of higher mathematics and I'm not reaching too many people with this, not like, let's say, a mainstream channels like Tibby's or um, Black Pen, Red Pen, who kind of produce their content for an audience that, I don't know, doesn't need to be like um, 24 years old and have a 145 IQ, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that... Um, if I ever reach this, it's going to be Pussy Eater 69 on my 1 million play button. Um, I will also be teaching college students this term and I will suggest your channel to my students. Thank you, Hernandi. Thank you very much. We are the same age. You're from 94. Me too. Which is the relationship between A and B? Wait, let me see. Um, perfect squares. We have that the cardinality of B is greater than the cardinality of A. Because uh, more elements in B than in A, obviously. I should use L'Hopital on the cardinality of a set. What, what am I missing? Hey, Papa Flemmy, I'm 15 years old and I learn calculus from your videos itself. And it's an absolute honor to see you live. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I can um, do live streams more often. Um, if I have the time, I would love to do so. Papa, can you tell good colleges for undergraduate? Do you mean in Germany? I I only know about the University of Potsdam and they are doing a pretty great job and the professors over there are pretty good. So yeah, um, I can speak from my own experience that the University of Potsdam is pretty good. Okay, yeah, we can connect lines. That is good. When in doubt, use the Kira ambulance. F what the hell is this? This sounds... um. Kinda. Kita Ampule. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think it's a Jojo. Yeah, I thought so. Kira, Yoshka, Kira. I thought so that it's a Jojo reference. Why did I even think that this was a real thing? Uh, I'm. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Ooh, he got Rick rolled. No, no, he got Jojo rolled. <laughs> Do you tutor online? And would you be interested to tutor me for higher education? Um, I do online tutoring from time to time. You can shoot me a message at pi equals three at papaflemmy.engineer and we can see what we can do. Um, yes. Um, why is there a Rubik's Cube algorithm down there in the comments? I think someone's solving a Rubik's Cube down there right now. But uh, that is good. Um, okay. 
are there the same number of blocks in A and B? Um, let me see, we are going to put those two on here. No, there is one block missing in A. Right? I mean, putting the two on here, putting one here and one here, one is missing up there in the corner, meaning the cardinality of B is greater than the one of A. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let me see. What is the relationship between the card? They have the same cardinality because they are both um, infinite. I mean, if you have studied mathematics or if you have an understanding of infinity, it's kind of easy what they are um, asking here. But trust me, Priant is going to get harder and harder over time. So if you have to watch my previous live streams, you might know that some questions are pretty damn hard. Okay, most of the time I'm just really, um, really lazy when it comes to reading. I, I, I hate reading. <laughs> but um, other than that, yeah, they got some really good stuff going here. Um... A set that will be, I wanted to read, a set that will never be important throughout this course's end. It's not important, please. No one needs the natural numbers, okay? The set of non-negative integers. Why is there zero included? No, I can't accept that, to be honest. I can't accept that there's zero included. Which of these sets has the same cardinality as n? Yes. Okay, very nice, really hard. Okay. Um, okay, we are talking about the Kant now, Georg Cantor. Okay. Um, thing is, yeah, non negative numbers, but they declared it as natural numbers. Uh, I don't like putting zero into the natural numbers just because, um, historical wise, because the number zero came way later than uh, counting apples in your hands. One and two apples. Zero came way later, the idea of zero. I think negative numbers were there even before the number zero. So, yeah. Um, okay. Let's continue. That was good. Okay, countably infinite. Gottlob has a memory issue. <laughs> uh. That means he can't keep numbers in his head from moment to moment. He can place the settings nonetheless. Your friends Grace and Gottlob are having a dinner party and Grace has put out a chair for each of place settings. Why should he need to... Did I interpret something wrong? I just thought that Gottlob is, is putting all the stuff on the table, like like a snack on each uh, to to each chair, and I thought he can just see what he's going to put there. I think I just um, I just done goofed. Hmm. Okay. Uh, never mind. Okay. Um. Oof. Ah, sh here we go again, reading. Establishing a one-to-one -one correspondence allows us to establish that two or more sets have the same cardinality. Based on the image above, which of the sets does not have the same cardinality as the set of four attendees? I mean, it's the uh, glasses. Because it's three and not four. Okay. How many people? 194. All right, let's continue. The last two questions that we use vertical lines to indicate the cardinality. Yeah, um, if and only if. There we have it. Yeah, with the bijection. All right, okay. <laughs> IQ 145, reading comprehensions 50%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I hate reading. Okay, what is the cardinality of A? Yeah, let me see for a second. 
20 times 20, so we have 20 numbers in total. Okay, I was thinking, what is 400? What's the square root of 400? That is 20, so we have 20 numbers since we started 1. So that should do the trick, I suppose. Mm. Background music is so calm. Yeah, it, it indeed is. <laughs> um, just say bye so I could leave, please. No, Demartian, I'm not gonna say bye. I gotta say bye in 12 minutes. I got some other stuff to do, but I hope there's going to be another live stream pretty soon. Maybe a random Integra live stream or something. Did you guys know that I planned on posting one or two ASMRs for fun at some point? Um, because many people are actually requesting ASMRs and I was thinking about two types, just um, doing mathematics here at my chalkboard, like filming me while writing calmly onto the chalkboard without saying anything, just with um, some randoms, some, some random hoofs <laughs> in between, um, yeah, exactly, um, yeah. And the other one is going to be when I sit here and type and stuff like this. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, this would be cool. Um, <laughs> ASMR would be cool. This doesn't fit into one sentence, those two words, cool and ASMR. Let A be the set of all perfect squares. Let be They are infinite, so they have the same cardinality. That is easy, okay, by, by checking. ASMR, Papa Flammy, sniffing, Hageromo, Chalk. Um... That would be weird, right? I mean, just sitting here filming me doing... <laughs> just doing the sniff. <laughs> <laughs> Putting the Hagoromo chike here and then going like... That would be pretty hilarious. Like, like uh, getting myself a little, little line here, a little big line. Mmm... Okay, the Euclid numbers are the numbers you get when you multiply the first n primes together and add one. So the first three Euclid numbers, shouldn't they be called Euclidean numbers? I don't know, they would sound better to be honest. R. Um, 2 plus 1 is 3, it's yeah, it, etc. Why do Germans always start digging when they are going to the beach? It is a well known fact in Levenance that they do. I love digging in the sand. It's just because I am a Neanderthal. And. Yeah, I'm a caveman and I love digging holes. <laughs> I love digging into holes, <laughs> if you know what I mean. What's the fifth Euclid number? Okay, uh, one, two, three. Okay, we are going to multiply two times three times five times seven times eleven. It should be B, right? Yes, exactly. I mean... Uh, exactly, this is the one because the first five prime numbers. Andrew, my son, no. Um, I would love to insert a little Breaking Bad meme into here where where Walter White just says no, um, but I can't do that. Hello, uh, Andrew Dodson. Andrew, why aren't you a member of my channel yet? You have to do a super chat. Or you have to become a member of the channel now since you are here. So, um, yeah. Become a member and you are going to get something to eat today. Um, Andrew is living down here under my uh, room. You can basically uh, go down there to Andrew um, if you climb into this box right here and you go downstairs. So this is the only way out. Um, yeah. And most of the time when I open up the box, Andrew just starts yelling, What's going on, smart people? It's so annoying. I, I basically never go down there. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically everything. Do not dare question the Cuba. Okay. Um, let us continue. <laughs> Why are Euclid numbers interesting? Suppose you had a complete finite li What remainder would be the... Bleh. I have to read this. Um, I think there are infinitely many Euclid numbers, which does make sense because there are infinitely many prime numbers. I do whatever you want. Just let my family go. No, Maureen is going to stay in the bathroom. Maureen is not going to be um, freed. Not gonna happen. Okay, Andrew, um, I gotta let um, 
I gotta let Kelly go if you become a ten dollar member of the channel or if you do a ten dollar super chat now, then Kelly is 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 free to go. <laughs> I gotta rob Andrew of his money because um at one point he, he overtook me in subscribers because he has like the MLG Imba bonus of um being liked by an admin of a huge Facebook group. And from this point onwards, he just kept being like this 26k to 30,000 subscribers um, bigger than me on YouTube. So he got one or two cents more than me, than, than I do. So yeah. Um. <laughs> Why are you glitting up this interesting? Suppose you had a complete finite... <laughs> Jesus Christ, Papa. Andrew, get your dots on. <laughs> List of every prime number. You multiplied all of them together and added one, getting the number Q. What remainder would there be when Q is divided by any of the primes? One. No. Wait. Yeah, it was one. I was thinking it was one. Why did I... Um, okay. Uh, ah, stop cancelling infinities. I'm gonna piss and shit down your basement. If you don't stop doing <laughs> regularization down there. Oh, sad regularization. <laughs> Noises. Ah, oh, goodness. Um, is, if there is a less prime, to the Ababu prime, it's called the Ababu prime, would the less Euclid number be a prime or composite? It's a composite number. No, it can't be composite because we got rid of all the prime numbers. Oh, why am I... Now I get it. It's, it's Euclid's proof of the infinitude of primes. I'm being stupid here. I'm terribly sorry. Um, okay. Hello, LPN Lyrics. Is the set of all prime numbers. I know this. I know this. It's infinite. <laughs> I knew this one. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> is that is finitely countable? Uh, which of these is finite? Aleph zero is the cardinality of any countably infinite set. The number of digits in pair. It's infinite. The set of points on a unit circle. It's infinite. Um, the set of Euclid numbers, it's infinite. Yeah, right, I mean, yeah, does make sense. <laughs> Go home, Flammy, you're drunk. I'm at home already, God damn it. <laughs> Okay, um, let us go through Kanto's quest and then I'm going to stop the live stream. It was a bless doing a live stream today. It was, um, was absolutely fabulous. Had a lot of fun till now. What is the relationship between... They are both good. Okay, that was easy. By the way, you can try it print using the link at the top of the description. Try it out for yourself. Um, <sighs> Once we've made a correspondence like this, it's possible to literally count using all of the numbers from either set. For example, using... I was looking for 69 in here, but it wasn't there. For example, using the integers as the correspondence above indicates, counting would sound like this. 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 4, 5, negative 5, 6, negative 6. What will the hundredth number in this list be? Okay, since we start at 0... Um, okay, for, uh, this is the, f uh, it's, it's, it's an even one, so it's not going to be negative, so, um, all the even iterations are positive numbers, 
and it's going to be 49 iso it's it's fi Fifty. Got to fifty, okay. Why not right there? Yeah, I'm too lazy to read, doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no what I no not not even what I meant to say was it it's it's a positive number, not even. Um my IQ is negative one forty, I'm <laughs> terribly sorry. Okay. Uh, we got some real numbers going, okay. Um, diagonalization, um, flashbacks. Let's start by comparing the cardinalities of the set of real numbers and a couple of different subsets of the real numbers. We deal uh, more with subsets in a later quiz, but for the moment you can think of a subset as simply a collection of items chosen from that set. Is the cardinality of just the positive real numbers not equal? Yes, definitely. Oh. Alright. Um, now let's consider a subset. Mm, which of the given fractions is the terminating decimal 0 0.227 equivalent to? Yeah, I mean it's... 227 over 1000. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, modular IQ arithmetic. Arithmetic? Arithmetic, arithmetic. I don't know the difference. Um, I think you're using something, uh, one of the kind to uh, to denote like the operation, like like the arithmetic mean or is it the arithmetic mean i think it's the arithmetic mean and the branch of mathematics it's called arithmetic okay it's pretty thick suppose we want to start with x something and find out what ration number x is ah uh, i really like this um like the repeating periodic decimal digits that's a really cool thing to put into um other terms um now if we subtract the tail goes away yeah all right we are going to subtract it from both sides and then we divide by 99 this is like the decimal that we are having here what is this okay we got 49 over 99 in a normal case and that should work out all right math thick number figure <laughs> diagonalization argument by daddy canto canfe canfe Okay. Oh, Kenfer. Uh, I love Guild Wars. Guild Wars 1 was so good. Was there already a Kenfer Kenta update for Guild Wars 2? I haven't played it in ages. I love Guild Wars. It's such a great game. Our ultimate goal, as was Kanto's, will be to prove ours uncountable. Okay. Um. Exactly. Um. If you haven't watched Sex Star 69's um video. On the topic, he recently made a video about the Cantor diagonalization argument. Um, which of the following shows a way to arrange these fractions into one ordered list? It's exactly C. Just because we are sure to get each and every number by this algorithm, um, with the other ones, it's a bit hard to catch all of them. So I would say C. And that's the only one. Now let's look at what's left in the real numbers. Mm, if you remove all the rational numbers, this set is known as the rational numbers. We notated Q prime. Is this a common notation? I have not seen this before. Rational numbers have a decimal expansion that will never repeat. Although that doesn't mean they can follow a pattern. For example, this one. Okay, most definitely has a pattern. One, two, and uh, blah blah blah, and so forth. However, there is no finite string we can produce that says we simply repeat that string over and over. This kind of looks like a Liouville number, and it looks transcendental. I think this number is transcendental. It looks like a Liouville number. If you haven't seen that already, um, or if you don't know about this, Google it. It's pretty interesting. Hi, Papa Flemmy. What exactly is pi equals three? Papa Flemmy dot engineer. Is it an email? Yeah, it's my email. It's my email address. 
Um, Wheel Theory is also really cool. It's really cool talking about wheels. There's also a different structure, uh, which I can't remember the name of, um, where you can also divide by zero, which is pretty good, uh, pretty good to define. Um, what is the 50th digit after the decimal in A? I mean, there's a 50-50 chance I'm going to get this right. And Snack is going to press the button. I'm going to look away. Snack is going to do the job. Um, have I hit something? Okay. Snack says it's free and... Snack is so smart. I mean, do you know? The probability of getting it right was one half. <laughs> it was one half. So... The probability was pretty high to get the right one, but Snack, you are really smart. Yes, I know, I live on your t-shirt. Yes, Snack merch, it's available, it's pretty good here. I love Snack. Um, my Miwa thinks that the Snack merch is also pretty cute. Everyone thinks that the Snack merch is really cute. And if you say, by the way, this right here is called and Snack, it's great me. If you say Snack, Snack, Snack into the mirror exactly three times, you are gonna summon Croton Snack. And some people tried it out and it worked for them. But don't do it at 2 a.m. because you are going to summon Croton Hydra. And this is the um, free, free head version of Croton Snack. So say Snack, Snack, Snack into the mirror three times and you gotta summon Croton Snack. Yeah, thank you. I gotta look into the email once I'm done with the stream in a bunch of minutes. Ooh, what is this? Is the example this the both? What is the value of C3? <clears throat> Are okay, um... Let me read for a second. If Q primes and count is countable, then there must be at least one to one correspondence between Q prime and post finches n. If we imagine that such a correspondence exists, then we can use it to count or in written form to enumerate all of the values in Q prime and imagine them written out an infinitely long list of random. To simplify things, we're gonna stick with just a value from zero to one. We don't actually know what the first four irrational numbers in the list might be, so let's name the digits with variables. In the example list above, what's the value of C3? Oh, I just need to compare, okay, this is 5. Yeah, um, I was thinking there's like a better pattern in there, but it was um, literally just <laughs> um, proof by inspection, you could say. <sighs> Using the same list mentioned in the previous problem, call the number composed of all the digits along the diagonal the D. For example, if our list begins like this, then D begins 0.7952. Yes, exactly. Now let's reuse an irrational number we saw just recently. A formed starting with a zero and then the sequence with one, two, two, or oh, we make this into a new number, B. What oh, is our new number B after being formed on the original list? No. It's a new irrational number. This is the second diagonal blah 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 that diagonalize blah blah argument of Canfor. Is Q prime countable? No, it's uncountable. There are way more. There are actually way more transcendental and irrational numbers that there are um, finitey boys. To recap, we found something. Is R countable? No, it's uncountable. Okay, which of the following is not countable? The set of points. Yes, that was easy. Okay, we are getting into the finals. Okay, we, we get some stuff going. And we are done. We but we are done, me boys and girls. Uh, one out of 57 people still there. Um, and this basically... Concludes the live stream. Um, I want to say a few last words just because um, You guys were awesome and now my camera is here. It's, it's it's a crappy camera But OBS studio refuses to work from time to time when I plug in my 
Logitech camera and hence I have to use my laptop camera. Even though this um, Zenbook Pro Duo by Asus is, is pretty goddamn Gucci, the camera pretty much sucks. But you gotta, um, yeah, you gotta, um, uh, right? <laughs> you can't have everything, let's put it like this. Um, other than that. Just as a little last message, this video has been sponsored by Print. Obviously, I said it at the beginning, and I thank you guys for for watching. You were great, and I was um, yeah. I have three Nandroids there in the back, but I don't like Nandroids. Um, other than that, um, I had a lot of time looking into chat, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, one of the most fun live streams I ever had. And it was so much fun just being kind of um, mentally disabled today. But yeah, other than that. Thank you guys for watching. Try out Preint um, using the link at the top of the description. You can see it up here and you can really support the channel this way. Um, if you guys uh, just try out Preint, you could really help me like this because this just helps me keep Preint as a sponsor and this just means that I can keep the channel going like it is at the moment. And this also allows me to do Flamble Maps 2 over there just because, um, yeah, I, I have the financial... Um, I have the financial, uh, what what could I say? I have the financial resources to actually um, put the time into all of this. So yeah, it would really help out the channel if you could just try out print at least once. It, it would really help out the channel. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Um, and up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Why are you a little bit disappointed, my boy, Jose? Oh, because you just arrived. Um, I love you, Jose. Um, other than that, um, I'm going to tell you when there's a new live stream. I gotta announce it on the stories yet again, maybe next time also on the community tab. And yeah, have a great freaking day, my sons and daughters out there. Trial pre and ciao.